there booktube, it's Janet and today I've got my March wrap up. March March's topic for Shelf Slam was books released in 2016 and I managed to complete nine books in the month of March although I did have some overlap from books that I hadn't finished in February and I've still got some books, well one book that I haven't finished yet um, which I will finish in April. So I'm going to go from my lowest rated book up to my highest rated book and the first one which I gave two stars to was Eliza Rose by Lucy Worsley. I was really disappointed in this. I absolutely love Lucy Worsley. Um, I didn't like the writing style. I found it quite cliched um, and yeah some of the plot lines sort of just petered out and didn't go anywhere and so yeah it wasn't for me. Sorry Lucy. Her non-fiction books are brilliant by the way as her, her coats. The next one which I gave a very generous three stars to was The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. Now this is so beautiful this book and it sort of promised so much. It's um, historical fiction and it's set in uh, Victorian London and it's all about um, a feisty, um, wealthy young lady who defies her family and goes about trying to get what she wants. But oh god, it was so boring and she was so weird and every character in it was vile and and I just wanted to love it but I didn't and it was just dull and then all the action happened in like the last 70 pages but it was predictable and it was just meh. and I was so sad because it, a book so pretty should be so great but it wasn't. Uh, the next one is which I gave a tentative again three stars to was an audiobook and that is My Name is Lucy Barton by Elizabeth Strout. I think this has been um, shortlisted for might have been the Booker Prize, can't remember now. Um, I just found it a bit dull really. Um, it just follows this woman who is somewhat estranged from her parents and siblings and she's in hospital having an operation and her mum comes to visit her and then they start talking about weird trivial things about neighbours and stuff that's in Heat magazine and all that sort of stuff and then um, the woman in hospital Lucy Barton has some sort of complication that requires her to be whisked off to theatre and at that point her mum chooses to go home before she sees the outcome of her child in hospital and then yeah and then nothing happens and yeah it, I suppose it's a literary fiction where nothing really does happen but seriously you know you want something to happen but you don't even know what it is that they fell out over. Next up is The Wonder by Emma Donoghue and this again was one I listened to on audiobook and this was a solid three star for me. It is quite a slow one but it, it did get going and it, it's set in Ireland um, where there's a young girl who's supposed to be um, a potential saint because she just doesn't eat and they're looking on it as a miracle and the whole village are sort of colluding in this, they're all believing it, they're all taken in by it, they want it so badly to be true and the, so in order to sort of prove the point there is an English nurse appointed and a nun um, who are going to take it in shifts to watch it for two weeks to see what happens and it's just as the story unfolds from that. So it was interesting, it was a good read um, but it didn't blow me away. Next up was a four star read from me and that's Holding by Graham Norton. I've got a picture of it because my daughter's actually reading it at the minute. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised by this obviously if you don't know Graham Norton he's a, an Irish celebrity in the UK who has probably like you know the biggest sort of Friday night chat show in the UK. Um, and he's quite irreverent, quite humorous and so um, I wasn't sure what to expect from his book and it's kind of like a bit of a cosy crime book. Um, the character of Graham Norton you see on the TV is not the character that comes through the book. You, you forget that that's who's wrote it. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's a bit of a whodunit. There's a body found in this village and it's been there for quite some time. And it's it's what led to that death. Who is this body and who was responsible? 
Um, so I really enjoyed it. My daughter is reading it at the minute and she has just said that it's not particularly doing it for her at the moment. Um, so whether it's the genre, the type, I don't know, but maybe it's not for everybody, but I liked it. Next up is Hex by Thomas Old Hoyvelt and this is translated from the Dutch and this was a buddy read between myself, Eleanor and Tracy. Um, Tracy from Flamingo Reads and Eleanor from Eleanor Reads Books. Um, we felt that we needed to read it together because it is supposed to be a dark, grisly, scary book. I gave it a four stars for me. I did enjoy it. Um, it's all about this woman that haunts this um, little sort of town in America that she wanders the town and she's from I think the 17th century and she has her eyes and her mouth stitched up and she just suddenly appears and people are quite used to her just appearing um, but then those pesky kids start interfering with Catherine and bad things happen um, and it was good I enjoyed it I just wasn't keen on the ending um, it, mm, it let me down um, but it was a good four star read. I did enjoy the whole mysterious kind of spookiness about Catherine but the ending was a little bit meh. Uh, next we've got another fabulous four star read uh, and that's The Widow by Fiona Barton and this again was a buddy read between me and Brittany from Brittany uh, from Under the Radar Books, Eleanor from Eleanor Reads Books and Tracy from Flamingo Reads and I absolutely loved this. I couldn't put it down. Um, if you want a fast thrilling page turn a book that just takes you away and you don't have to think about it this is the one um, it follows the story of Jean Taylor who is the widow of a man who was strongly suspected of child abduction and he has died um, by falling under a bus and it's the press trying to get Jean's story and it's written by Fiona Barton who was a Fleet Street journalist so you do get an insight into some of the techniques the press use to get a story, to chase down a story, to uh, woo you, to tell your story and um, yeah it, it was really good and um, you start to see things through Jean's eyes and she's not the most reliable narrator but you start to sort of, there's like little breadcrumbs left as you go through it of actually what has been going on in Jean's head all this time and what kind of life did Jean live with this man. Um, yeah, so I do recommend it. It is quite a gripping uh, read that you just want to keep going into because you want to know what's going to happen next. Quite twisty turning. Uh, next was A Close and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers good solid four star read, follow up to A Long Way to Small Angry Planet, wasn't quite as good as A Small Angry Planet but loved it nonetheless, um, it follows one of the periphery characters from that series and it was really interesting, really well done and can't wait for the next one. And the final one I've got to show you is a five star read for me and that is The Good Stuff Sonata by Rose Tremaine and this was an audiobook that I listened to. When I first started listening to it I thought I might end up DNF in it. Um, it's quite a slow start and I wasn't sure where it was going and I wasn't sure what the point of it was um, but as the layers of the story come in and you hear not only Gustav's voice but different um, uh, the eyes, you see it through, narrated through the other characters in the book you start to understand Gustav and fall in love with Gustav in a way um, it is just a really good character study of this little boy who grows up in post-war Switzerland and lives his life basically for others and through others and you start to understand why as you get through the book and um, so as it moved on I'm so glad I stuck with it because I absolutely loved it um, and I ended up just loving Gustav and so it was a five star read for me beautifully written um, so I recommend that one and the audiobook was fantastic if you want to get it on audiobook and um, I think that probably made it more of a five star than maybe if I sat and read it myself so that was what I read in March. Um, let me know how you're getting on and what you did and if you've read any of these or you know if you've got any good recommendations and so like that was my 2016 um, pile and topic for March. So chat with me in the comments down below. Um, keep reading, I will see you all soon. Bye!